Welcome to the first installment of D&D 20. Let's get right into it. So there's this merchant by the name of Jerem, and he's seeking escorts to travel with him to the capital of the Redlands, a city known as Brenziri that lies on top of a mountain. A half-elf in the bar, trying to hide his ethnicity really badly, is, is there, drinking. And a gnome with another half-elf is trying to order tea which puzzles the barkeep. Sounds like a start of a bad joke, right? In any case, they come together and Jerem lays out the contract. With payment of a safe arrival to Branziri of 1,000 gold coins and whatever we find on the road, these travelers, adventurers, agree. They are as follows. A half high elf ranger by the name of Siler Amras a half elf, a half wood elf, trick box, Lorevere Oak Lord, a gnome druid with his gigantic pet wolf, Tyleaf Frockwood, and a dwarf cleric that goes by the name of Dodo Club Chop. Now, the f as they leave the the city on their, their journey, the first real town that they goes by the name of Mirian Mirian's Luck. It's a pretty gloomy town. The walls on the outside are, are run down, um, crumbling at some points. Uh, really, just not in the best of shape. You can you can tell that the guards um, and the patrols don't really take care of this this outpost. It is just an outpost. Um, the party comes in and. Basically, they they find out that Miriam's luck is kind of a a name that was given to the town just because of its its bad luck. Legend says that Miriam was a bard, and he tries to trick a god, um, which results in him being cursed with bad luck, which seals his fate by him dying because of a sliver. Apparently he gets a sliver, gets infected, he dies. That's how the story goes anyway. As the party settles in for the night, they, they notice that the, there is an, there's a lack of children. Uh, even if this isn't a big outpost, there should be children running around as people have, have made this their home. Um, as, the, as they figure out and ask people, they, there's talk of goblins in the hills and you know by the by the sea uh, that they have been around and the actually the goblins kidnapped all the children now out there is a overly distressed woman she is openly crying and grieving and um, sigh finds out that it's a woman by the name of Elena and she is the blacksmith's wife um, Laura Veer also by herself finds out that um, Elena actually didn't like wasn't part of the town before she she had come there uh, a couple of years ago and she was actually pregnant at the time uh, the clergyman or the, the Comacope mayor basically the cleric who is in charge of the town uh, helped her give birth and it turned out to be a half orc. Now she said that she would take care of it, and the clergyman did not ask any questions. Uh, obviously, uh, he f he had the feeling that it was not by her choice, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, basically, after that, the child was never seen again, and she, a couple years ago, married the blacksmith. Um, with this all happening in the background, Sai leaves the town. He, he hears of an outpost, uh, a hunting outpost, just a few kilometers away from the city, and he's there basically to ask more information about the goblins. The hunters would know. Uh, Dodo sees this from, from the inn and basically follows, follows him. Uh, Lorvir and Tyleaf stealthily follow. They don't really want to be found out but 
regardless, in the end, the party finds themselves at the outpost. And after staying there the night, finding information, they go and hunt these, these goblins. Now, after a while, they come across uh, a cave where the goblins are. And with uh, elusive or elaborate, I should say, plan from Lorevere, dress up poor little Thai leaf as a gnome to distract the guards by saying that there is something shiny in the tall grass, in which case then the party ambush them, kill the guards, and proceed inside the cave. Now, inside the cave, as they are they exploring, as they are trying to find where the, where the children are, there's a small pool, pretty deep pool, that Sai, that catches Sai's eye, and there's something in there which he goes in, dives in, fishes out, and it's this uh, lockbox, small chest. And inside, with Lorvir's help in opening it, there is some treasure, and more importantly, a bow. Uh, Lorvir feels connected to this bow somehow, and it whispers to her. So she takes it, and it is, it is hers now. Uh, with more exploration, the, they find the children unprotected, caged, but unharmed. Uh, Sai and Lorevir go in to unlock them and spring a trap. Noob level 1 adventurers, I tell you. <laughs> uh, the floor falls through and they, they slide down into this, this pit and as the doors are slowly retracting, uh, Ty Leaf and Dodo make the quick decision and jump in after them leaving the children behind up there. Uh, it's dark, no lights. Uh, they, they put on uh, torches just to, to see the dark and they hear something coming down the tunnel which appears to be dogs, vicious, rabid dogs that the goblins apparently kept. Um, after the fight, they make their way back up and free the children heading back into town. Uh, they stop by the outpost, spend the night there, children get some sleep, get fed by the hunters that are up there. And during that night, uh, while Elena is in town, she's, she's crying, grieving over the lost children, there's a dark figure that appears behind her. Do you weep for the children or for yourself, he says. You certainly didn't weep for me. And he stabs her in the neck with an arrow. So the party, you know, the next morning come back in the city with the children and it's this this weird mood atmosphere, something is wrong, and they go over to the clergyman and they find out that Elena is dead. Lorvir goes and sees her body it takes the takes the arrow basically, and it's this black, pure jet black arrow. Uh, Sai does see because uh, his ranger training does see tracks going in and tracks going out. As he tries to follow, they just slowly disappear until they are no more. Um, this basically non-existent. Uh, as the you know the children are rescued, they are back in the in the town. The townsfolk are are grateful, uh, and we continue on our way with Jerem. That's that's pretty much it. Uh, as for that, I'll stop it right there. Put in second installment, and uh, yeah, hopefully so. We already know what's going to happen. I, I will definitely tell you when you guys can comment. Uh, and please make sure to do that. Interesting stuff. I can't wait. Stay tuned.